we'll go ahead and get started. It's a little after two. And of course, everyone's here today to learn about managing IT and security, uh, cybersecurity costs for your business. And uh, we'll get to that. We have some good topics that we're going to, and some good takeaways for you as we go forward. But uh, as we get started, a little bit about us, uh, Kirkham Iron Tech, uh, you'll see it on uh, Tom's background, but uh, we provide managed IT and security services. And Tom mentioned a lot of things we do are not normal. It's not what the average uh, provider gives to their clients. So what we do, how we do it, and overall the full scope of what we provide uh, to our clients is extremely unique. And we'll touch on that as we go uh, throughout this webinar. But uh, you can read a little bit here, but overall, we help companies get the best uh, ROI on their IT and cybersecurity investments uh, using best-in-class tools and security practices. Uh, we abide by international standards. We also help create leadership alignment. And overall, we help create a security-first culture, uh, which is becoming a necessity in business today, in all businesses, uh, in all industries. Now, and, you can, and something else we don't mention enough of it. That's uh, the top 250. Yes. SSPs. That's a worldwide ranking. And that's the first time we applied for it. So that's that's, that's a, right. That's right. But that's all over the world. And we're in the top 250. So that's right. And myself, I'm Davin Chitwood. I'm the sales executive here at Kirkham Iron Tech. Uh, I help businesses assess their current IT and security environment. I help them reveal their gaps and vulnerabilities. Uh, we help create a specific plan to address those gaps and vulnerabilities, and of course, provide recommendations. Um, but overall, I, myself, and Kirkham Iron Tech, we partner with businesses uh, like yourself um, to make sure you're taken care of and provide you the services that you need. Now, we also have Tom, Tom Kirkham, our founder and CEO here. Uh, he is amazing at educating and uh, supporting our clients and everyone all over the nation, but also uh, he represents our culture here at Kirkham Iron Tech uh, to a T. Well, I'm here to serve you, Devin, and I don't mean that facetiously. <laughs> Definitely. Now, I'll leave this up here. Well, which is a different topic for a different time, right? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Uh, now, I'll leave this up here briefly, but these are just some of the services that we offer. You can take a quick uh, screenshot or a picture real fast. Um, and Tom, uh, do you have anything to add to this? I know right, right after this, we're going to jump into the content, what you came here for. Yeah. So the, the, the thing I want to point out is that first column, Managed Cybersecurity Services. It's very easy to think of and most people think this way. So if you're one of those, and you probably are, uh, don't worry. It's because of history, you know, the 40 years of the PC business and things like that. But that very first thing, cybersecurity, that's got to be job one. It's job one here. It's exactly it's job right. one for all of our clients. We we have certain standards and inter like Davin mentioned, international standards and uh, independent third party recommendations such as the White House and in all of that. And there's certain services that we provide that if the client doesn't buy them, we don't take them on as a, as a client. And this is around cybersecurity specifically. And that's, and that's one of the things you really need to look for. It's a mistaken or a misconception that, you know, everybody's got IT. Mm -hmm. And so they think that by bolting on improved cybersecurity defense, it's a bolt on, but you got to flip that around. You've got to lead with cybersecurity endeavors and initiatives and improve your cybersecurity first because a cybersecurity breach could be catastrophic to your company. You buy, you invest in IT to increase productivity and efficiency and, and grow revenue, handle more customers mm -hmm. and clients, but your investment in cybersecurity is to protect your reputation, uh, perhaps prevent a catastrophic security event in your organization. So it has far reaching impact on all the stakeholders in your company and your customers. They don't want you to have a catastrophic cybersecurity that's gonna put you out of business. And so you, you really gotta think that way. We, you know, we all know that you buy PCs and servers to get a good ROI. We all know mm -hmm. that it's, it's, but cybersecurity hasn't gotten that far yet. You know, 40 years ago, buying a PC 
was risky in most people's <laughs> minds because it was yeah. much more expensive. You didn't know if you were going to get an ROI on it. And it took that kind of vision to see that this is what you've got to do. You just have to invest in IT. And That's we're exactly simply right. not there as a society yet with cybersecurity, but rest assured you're going at some point, and it's going to be sometime soon, if you don't have best practices and best-in-class products and, and a skilled security team, it, it, monitoring and responding to everything, you will be required to. Regulations are rapidly escalating across all types of industries. But I wanted to point that out. You, yeah. you, your service provider should treat security as job one, no, uh, no wavering on that. And you've mm -hmm. got to spend the money on this. And it's not optional in yeah. our minds. And that's what you want to do is you're inside your company. It needs to be treated very seriously. That's exactly right. And you mentioned investing in IT and investing in cybersecurity and the return on investment uh, from that, which brings us to why we're here today. Managing your IT and cybersecurity costs, and you could even replace cost with investment. And it brings us to a term that is used very widely throughout indus uh, different industries and throughout business. Uh, but specifically, we're going to talk about benchmarking for IT and cybersecurity. And what is benchmarking? There's a quick definition here. But Tom, I know uh, you have an interesting take on this. What is benchmarking and, and why is benchmarking becoming uh, necessary in IT and cybersecurity for all businesses in all industries? Right. Well, it's it's really it's really something, it's a best practice for any management, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't matter what industry you're in. But of course, we're service provider, IT, cybersecurity service provider. So I want to talk a little bit about why you need to know about benchmarking, why if you're saving money, you may be saving too much money because you're probably overlooking something. Mm -hmm. And the ROI you're expecting out of your IT, if you're not spending enough on it, you may actually not realize the productivity and efficiency gains. You're probably not making as much money or growing your top line revenue because you're simply not spending as much as your peers. And there's a reason for that. And uh, and we're going to talk about cybersecurity and the budgeting mm -hmm. around that. So what I what I hope to do today is rather than you pat yourself, let's, let's say you you know what your gross revenue per employee should be for your industry, you know, and maybe it's a hundred thousand, maybe it's a million dollars. I don't know, mm -hmm. but you, you look at your peers and see what they average gross revenue is per employee. There's all sorts of metrics and and benchmarks out there you know how many you know how many employees should we have and 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 all of that and so today we're going to talk about it from a cybersecurity and IT perspective yes and uh to kind of put that in a nutshell the way I think about benchmarking and how we work with our our clients is uh, benchmarking it's made up of about three parts you could say three pillars but uh, those three pillars are comparison evaluation and improvement you compare, you see what your peers are doing, like uh, what they're spending and why they're spending that, like Tom had said. Then you evaluate what you have currently. Are you meeting that? Or what are you missing if you're not where uh, maybe the most uh, efficient uh, companies are at? Or what, what are you missing? And then from that evaluation, you improve, you take action. And we're going to talk more on that. But uh, regarding exact benchmarks and exactly where you should be for your IT budget and your cybersecurity budget. Um, these percentages here show around 19, 9 to 15% of your uh, total gross annual revenue uh, should be spent on is, is about the typical IT budget. Now that there's lots of factors that go into that, um, depending on the size of the company, the industry that you're in. But overall, 10% of that IT budget is being spent on cybersecurity. And right. And these this this numbers right here are for professional service firms, mm -hmm. accounting, banking, finance, law. You know, if you're in a manufacturing company, that's those numbers aren't going to work. Mm -hmm. But we deal a lot. Most of our clients are in professional services. And this is what the research tells us. These are dead on accurate statistics. And if you're only spending 5% 
of your cybersecurity and IT budget when all your peers are spending 10, the first way to look at that is what are we missing? That's exactly right. And I do want to point out uh, 10% of that IT budget should be spent on cybersecurity. That may be an eye opener to many people on here today or anyone that's watching this in the future, because uh, you may have an IT budget, you may have all your IT taken care of and set up, but you may have not even thought about cybersecurity yet, or you may not even have cybersecurity in place. So changing that thought of just spending everything on IT now, because cybersecurity is becoming a necessity in business, you have to change your budgeting thoughts. Okay, I have this IT budget, but now I need to pull a part of this or set aside uh, this amount specifically to implement security for our business, for our company. And the reason that's becoming more popular and more necessary now is because in nowadays, in 2023, every company relies on technology to do their job. No matter what you do, there is some type of technology uh, incorporated in your day-to-day -day activities. And so just think about if that was taken away, if you couldn't access your technology, if you... Uh, couldn't access the information or the data that you need uh, to do your everyday job, how would that affect your company and what is the cost associated with that? Say you're a lawyer, you may make $200 to $300 an hour, but if you're text down for three days, there's a cost associated with every single hour that you're unable to do your job. And so because of that reliance on technology now, uh, cybersecurity and that cybersecurity budget is just necessary. It's part of doing business. And if you're not meeting that benchmark, you may not have all the security you need uh, to be uh, secure or to avoid those ransomware attacks or to avoid being down for a week, a month. There's yeah, proper and, steps that you have to take. Yeah. And the way to uncover that is to go through an assessment of your cybersecurity and your IT stuff. And, and you know, if you're running a server into the ground until it fails, that's not a good investment. Hmm. So you'll make more money by replacing that server before it fails, not to mention the downtime, loss of data. You'll make more money by planning replacements, desktops, laptops, servers. Just replace it before it breaks. That's exactly right. And, and so, you know, it's just, it's just the smart way to do it. Yes. And uh, I mentioned the importance of the cybersecurity budget strictly because of our reliance on technology. But this 10 percent, this may change in the next year, two years or six months, simply because of compliance requirements as well. Uh, depending on what industry you're, uh, you're in, I can rest. I can assure you that there are going to be compliances. If they're not already in place now, there will be security compliance requirements here in the next year, two years. So if you don't have that cybersecurity budget now, you're going to have to in the next year or two just to be compliant. And that's not even saying that's uh, compliance doesn't mean you have the best best practices in place or you have best in class security. That may uh, just simply be implement an EDR, endpoint detection response tool, implement cybersecurity training. That could be the bare minimum. But to get that best-in-class security like you need, um, that 10% may change in, in the very near uh, future. Yeah, the compliance with cyber insurance. That's exactly right. Yeah. Now, if you are spending less than your peers, if you're not at that percentage that we just uh, mentioned, well, what are you, what are you mentioning? What are you missing? Uh, it comes down to simply figuring out what you're missing. How are you supposed to find out what you're missing? How do you evaluate your current state? How do you figure out what you have now? And how do you figure out those gaps? How do you know that you're getting the best return on investment on your IT infrastructure or on your cybersecurity at the moment? How are you preparing to stay ahead of the curve? Like we said, with those compliances uh, coming in soon, are you doing your due diligence to prepare for that so you're not hit with $10,000 in cybersecurity expenses next year? How do you know you're doing uh, what's best in practice? How do you know you have the best of the best security in place? And that brings us to these, these first steps that you, that you have to take to answer all of those questions that I just mentioned. One, what you're doing now, 
researching those benchmarks, understanding what you should be spending on IT and security. How do you figure that out? You come talk to professionals. Uh, you come talk to specialists uh, like Tom here, a genius in IT and cybersecurity. He can tell you what you should, should be spending, why you should be spending it, and then help you. And then we can help you develop your plan from there. But the first step is researching those benchmarks, what you're doing right now. Now, the second step is a security and risk assessment. This is something that uh, we recommend doing every single year or even uh, more often than that. But what you need to do is know your current state, know what you have in place uh, regarding IT, uh, regarding cybersecurity. Maybe you're still using uh, an antivirus. That's what you're relying on to monitor and detect threats on your desktops that you use every single day. And that's a, a whole different beast that we could tackle. Uh, but, and we've done webinars on why antivirus isn't good enough anymore, but simply in that security and risk assessment, you may see that, hey, I'm using antivirus, but that's not enough anymore. Simply cybersecurity tags don't rely on those signatures that those antiviruses are looking for. And so some may say that antivirus is useless, but what is the tool that I need now? What, what should I have? Uh, you also understand what other gaps, maybe uh, email encryption, maybe you're not using multi-factor authentication, or maybe uh, you don't have cybersecurity training in place, which is if, if you don't have that in place, if I, you don't take anything away from this webinar today, you need to know that uh, you should have some type of security training for your employees. Uh, because over 90% of successful cyber attacks come from human error, just from you getting busy, maybe clicking on a link or uh, getting an email that you're in a rush and you send some credentials that way. Uh, you need training to combat those inevitable errors that employees make every single day. But that security and risk assessment is extremely important because you have to address um, your current state and then figure out what those gaps are. And then from that, you'll be able to create a plan. And if you're working with a, a specialist or a security provider or MSP, MSSP like us, we will help you go through this assessment step by step, hold your hand, um, help you understand the business impact on these vulnerabilities, on these gaps, and then recommend best in class uh, tools and practices, policies, procedures to address those gaps and fill uh, those and fix those vulnerabilities. And that's extremely important for all businesses in any, in, in any industry. And from that, we'll help you meet those benchmarks, help you understand why uh, you should be spending this, why you need this specific uh, recommendation and help you get to where you should be to get the best ROI on your IT and security. Now, from that, you understand your risk, you understand what you should do, you understand what you need to put in place now, and after that, it should make com complete sense to, okay, this is what I need, I need to take action on this, and I need to make sure I'm doing my part on one, securing my company, securing my clients, my customers information, and making sure I'm investing everything I can uh, to get the best ROI on my, my IT and security. Tom, do you have anything to add on, on these steps? I know uh, for companies, this it's only three steps. It seems very simple, but there's a reason that some business owners may have not thought this way or may not, may not do this at the time. It may not be that important. Uh, why is it extremely important that you take this step now? But, well, it's, you know, you're just comparing yourself to your peers. It was similar to, uh, you know, marketing mastermind meetings or any kind of mastermind, you know, that's in your industry and there's like 20 or 50 or 100 of you that belong to it. And you go there for business management and coaching and operations and, uh, you know, other aspects of running the entire organization. Well, all of those things have key performance indicators. Mm -hmm. And you need to understand your metrics and then you measure it. And then you apply values to it to compare to your peers. So, you know, we're going to talk about just cybersecurity and IT, but it, it applies, benchmarking could be done for any aspect of your organization. And um, 
it's just a it's a it's a it's a way to reverse your thinking instead of treating cybersecurity as an unnecessary expense we just we don't think it'll happen to us because why would anybody want to attack us and i'm not going right. to go into that but that's <laughs> that's a myth that's not true you know it's uh, you know we only see the ones that are on cnn but believe me there's a lot more that attack me small to medium-sized businesses and yeah. we don't hear of them right so, uh, but yeah, that it's it, whenever I look at the numbers, I'm looking at the PL, looking at the balance sheet, and I go, well, this we're not spending what our peers do. What are we missing? Mm -hmm. It's a, just a reversal. Uh, if you're already doing these things, fantastic. But yes, but you're above average. I mean, it's just a good way to do it. And and actually, you just think about what am I missing on everything constantly every day, like I do. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> you you know, you have to accept. And then sometimes I understand. You know, you you you're changing the wheels where you're going down the road often, and you got to prioritize what you're going to address first. But I would have to say that security is very very important, regardless of the size of your business. That's exactly right, and. As we talk about these steps, research and benchmarks, that's where you're at right now. You're at that step of understanding how much you should spend on IT and cybersecurity. Now, that second step, the security and risk assessment, that is something that we offer and provide for free to any and all businesses. It takes roughly uh, 30 minutes, one to two meetings, just to get the information that we need uh, to understand your environment and help you find those gaps those vulnerabilities that you're wanting to know, what am I missing out on? And then from that, we meet with you again and we understand, okay, we've taken all this information. Now we've built you a specific plan to fill these gaps, address these vulnerabilities. And with that information, you can take it and run with it, do with it as you will, or you can work with specialists and professionals and we can help you implement those specific recommendations for your company. We can help you meet those benchmarks that you're, that you're needing to meet to get the best ROI on your IT and cybersecurity. And yeah. I'll, I'll keep this up here for a minute, but I, I want to go back to our services to see what you should be getting. And if you're not getting these things, then you're missing something. And I, I will address that in a second. But uh, I do want to put that in the chat. There is a quick meeting link. You can use that to schedule a, a quick assessment or a quick chat where we can talk about these things and I can answer all the questions that you have. Or, of course, you can go to our, our website or phone number up there. And I'm going to go back to our, our services here in a second. But um, I just want to leave this up or take a screenshot picture if you need to. And Tom, my bad. I know I cut you off. What were you mentioning there? Well, I, I guess I was cutting you off, right? <laughs> well, well, I, I just want to, you know, no matter who you're going to for cybersecurity or IT, and, and we can also do the IT assessment as well. Of course. Uh, but we just figure that most people need cybersecurity, so that's what we lead with. And and we're best in class or world class. There's actually a term for that uh, that is recognized in our industry. And that's what we do. Best in class products, uh, NIST you know, international standards compliance and things like that. But what we really enjoy doing is going beyond the IT and talk to our clients about budgeting and benchmarks, making sure yes. if they're if they're saving money and they're performing better than their peers and they don't have any gaps, you know, you don't have any gaps, more power to you. Congratulations. Right. You You're just knocked of out of the park. But generally speaking, there's a reason why one IT service provider or one cybersecurity partner is cheaper or much cheaper than another. And we help you walk through that to uncover the gaps. You know, one of the things that makes us unique is we want to make sure that we've got management and leadership alignment. You know, maybe you're a CIO. Well, in, in order to instill a security first environment, you've got to have a culture change and you, not only the security awareness train, uh, training, but you've got to walk the talk and you've got to have management and, and accountability on that training, making sure it's getting done. You coach people that score lower, you do simulated phishing tests and see what the results are and see if remedial training needs to be done and on and on and on. And in addition to compliance issues, you know, one of our services 
is uh, virtual compliance or compliance as a service, we call it. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that you need to look for is that cybersecurity company or that IT company, uh, you know, what's their SLA, their service level agreement? And typically it's around time. You know, like I guarantee to respond to an issue within four hours. Yep. That's not the best practice. The best practice is to triage first and then guarantee a response time. The more impact a problem, the obviously any kind of security event needs to be looked at in much sooner than four hours. But when it comes to IT, yeah, you know, maybe, you know, this is, you know, this can wait six hours or eight hours or something like that. Because we we've got we we triaged here, and we've got a client that the the technical issue is impacting you know two hundred people mm -hmm. in a very serious manner. Well, that's we need to respond right now immediately. And we can't wait four hours just to meet our SLA agreement. So it's like going to the emergency room at the hospital. You know, you're sitting there for two hours. Somebody walks up. And they look fine to you and they get automatically taken back. And you're mm -hmm. thinking, what's going on here? Well, they triage that patient. You know, maybe they had a swollen calf muscle in their leg. Well, that's a sign of a blood clot that needs to be looked at immediately. They can't wait. It's life or death, even though they, by all appearances, they look like they're perfectly healthy. And so you don't know what those issues are. And uh, so you triage first. And, and then you SLA that. That's something important that you right. need to make sure when you're talking to service providers that that how they understand their response times. That's uh, exactly right. Another thing you need to make sure of is making sure they're committed to giving you the best experience that you can get. You know, you're, you're not getting grumpy IT people on the phone when you call support. Yes. You, you, you're, you've, you've actually engaged with a true partner in your business. You know, the way our revenue is set up, we make more money <clears throat> by you having fewer problems and, and no security breaches. It's that simple. We're both on the same side. Exactly right. That's, that's, how, it's, that's how it's done for us uh, because we do use very expensive tools. And uh, other companies may use cheaper stuff that's not nearly as effective, but that's not the way we do things. Consequently, it's a higher price. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we build our culture around that. So everybody's all on the same page. And, uh, and, and we like to do business with customers that have a culture like that as well. And so we don't have to educate them and, and they understand their investment in IT is an investment and not an expense. And they understand the uh, the seriousness of putting in cybersecurity defenses, you know, good stuff, enterprise grade, DOD level, Department of Defense level. Uh, those those are the clients that we really really love uh, to deal with because our culture is aligned, our attitudes are aligned, and we truly work together as a team. That's exactly right. Now we're coming up on the thirty minute mark. If you have any questions, feel free to throw those in the chat. I will stay on just a little bit longer, but um, as we're coming up on time, I do want to remind you, uh, we are offering this free security and risk assessment. All you have to do is uh, use the meeting link to uh, schedule a meeting at your convenience or reach out via email or give us a call and you'll be meeting with me. And so we'll talk through your organization, what you have in place and help you figure out those vulnerabilities and those gaps, help you fill those, build a plan for you specific to your business. And overall, that, that's the first step that you have to take to make sure uh, you're meeting those benchmarks, make sure you're getting the most out of your IT and cybersecurity. Now, we do these deeper dives every month. So if you have something you want us to talk about, uh, feel free to reach out. But uh, we'll, we look forward to talking to you next month. Music.